Hi, Patrick. Welcome to Movie Junk. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me on Movie Junk. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say how thankful I am to have you on today, Patrick, who fans of The Offer know as Mario Puzo. You play the writer and the creator of The Godfather on the Paramount Network. Uh, fans get to see you. Uh, and also, as far as, you know, what went on with the making of this film, everyone knows the final product, but not everyone knows kind of went on, you know, behind the scenes, right? And um, yeah. Can't forget to mention that you starred and also in one of the, my all-time favorite films already, The Irishman, Academy Award-nominated film. You're also in Boardwalk Empire, The Deuce. Uh, I have so much that I want to discuss with you today. Again, oh, just man. thank you enough for joining. Right on, man. It's great to be here. And uh, before we begin, you know, we do have the uh, the books here. You know, we do have the, the Godfather book, you know, Mario Puzo. Yeah. Book. And also, I heard you paint houses. There you go. All right. Look at that. Very cool. Now, I've never seen the two books like together on the same show. Oh, man. So that's a first. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's pretty awesome. I love it. And then you got, uh, what else do you have up there? Uh, so we also got... Uh, I'm trying to see if I was involved in anything else. Well, I we wish I could say I was involved in Rocky. On there, we got Rocky on there. Well, yeah. hey, there's Creed 3 coming out. We might be able to get you in there. Hey there. Yeah. Let's let's work on that together. Um, and I'm dying to jump into these roles, but I hate myself. I didn't start off by asking, you know, how it all started for you. Uh, what got you started in the business? Were there any inspirations? I'd love to hear that uh, to start off. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was just, you know, I, I found myself in the uh, in theater in high school and um, I was doing a, a musical called Cabaret, as you, I'm sure you've heard of. And uh, it was two performance, you know, these high school musicals where you, you know, rehearse for like eight months for two performances. And uh, it's lovely and exciting. And that was it. And I, I, before I got on stage on the second night, which was our closing, uh, I decided to, uh, you know, to follow the path of, uh, of, of being an actor. And, uh, and it's been, what, 31 years, I guess, since that day. And yeah. So. I know, I know you, you play a writer, but you're also a writer in real life, right? You've also written some projects. Yeah, I've written some things and I do write things. I, I, you know, I have a lot, I wouldn't consider myself a writer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a lot of friends that I would consider writers that write every day and, um, you know, are extremely connected to the process and, you know, the structure of writing. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing process. But yeah, there are times where I am kind of struck by inspiration and I have written a few things. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I am not a writer, but I occasionally write. Absolutely. So I don't know if it was a coincidence, but you just happened to have been born right between Godfather 1 and Godfather 2. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you got a chance to see it, you know, right, right at birth. But do you remember the first time that you had a chance to watch uh, one of the Godfather films? Yeah, I think I, uh, you know, I, I, it was, you know, I'm, I'm sure that it was on many times when I was a child and I, I wasn't, you know, uh, paying any attention to it, but I think I was probably like 11 or 12, maybe in that uh, area. And I watched it with my dad and, uh, you know, uh, it was kind of like an Italian American rite of passage. Like it just, you had to watch it and, you know, you had, you know, you saw, I saw the book, you know, visually it was very familiar to me. Um, and uh, so, I, you know, I knew what that was. I knew that was something that had to do with our, uh, you know, with our culture in some, some way. Uh, and then my dad showed it to me and I it was like watching home movies. You know, I had the, a lot of those people were, you know, for, you know, uh, people like that were friends with my father and spent time uh, at our house and, and they were, you know, friends and they held me in their arms. And so I, I really... You know, I saw these as people that I, I loved and cared about and had fun with and felt very comfortable with, you know, not knowing that either before they got there or after they got there, they had someone up against a wall, you know what I mean, beating the shit out of them or something, but not when they were with me. Yeah. Um, so it was like watching home movies, you know what I mean? I felt like I knew those people and, you know, the rooms they were in, you know, and the chairs and the, you know, the furniture and the environment, you know, it was very familiar to me. Yeah. Um, I wonder, and, and, and maybe you can help me answer this too, but why do you think we're so attracted to this genre, right? The, the mob genre. 
Uh, it sounds like, you know, you watched and you mentioned you watched Godfather kind of early on. And a lot of the things that you mentioned too, you know, have, have these people are obviously with family. Family is important. It's a huge theme, obviously, in The Godfather. But as fans, why do you think we're so attracted to this genre? I just think it's a very exciting lifestyle to think about, you know, to think about the people that actually live it and do it and live by those kinds of, or lack, I should say, lack of rules. But, but yeah. at the same time, there's other rules that are, once again, exciting and intriguing to, to look at from the outside, you know, it's sort of like the, uh, you know, when you're in a car and you see an accident and you're kind of hanging, your, you know, the rubbernecking thing. I think it's like that same thing, you know, you just want to catch a glimpse of something that you're not part of. Yeah. And I think it's also very exciting. There's a lot of money and there's clothes and there's this, this kind of, you know, loose and, and carefree and wild west uh, energy that we don't, see in our regular life you know what i mean we we follow the rules and you know the law and we do things the way we're supposed to do them and they just kind of you know people that kind of throw it all away and still exist become this is very interesting and so uh, and then you stylized and you know like i said fashion and clothes um you know there's a lot of those elements that are just it's attractive to uh you know to see it portrayed in film yeah and I mean, is, is there any way, I mean, if you can go back to the 10 or 11 year old version of yourself, I mean, is it, is it surreal no, feeling now that you are in a Godfather, you, you're in the Godfather world, right? So is it kind of surreal <coughs> feeling that um, the creator himself? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely surreal. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of one, yeah, it's like, you don't, uh, it's really hard to articulate. Um, yeah, it's very surreal. It's 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 just kind of, you know, you I, you know, you can look at it from afar. Like if I wasn't doing it, I'd say, oh my god, that would be like, yeah, incredible and what a dream. And, and but if but you're actually, you know, to actually be a part of sort of the the skeleton of this, uh, you know, of this body, the Godfather, the offer, and all this kind of thing. Like eventually, you just start to kind of feel like you're part of the body and you have to do what you're there to do. And, and then it's a kind of a love thing, you know, you start connecting with everybody and you keep reminding yourself that you're a part of something really special and unique. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, but you know, it's not like you wake up every day and go, Oh my God, but you are inside. And when you're communicating with other people going, Oh my God, but you're in it. So it's like a, you know, there's a, there's a strange, little little sort of purgatory of excitement that you kind of lay in you know yeah, yeah. and so how, how did you first uh hear about this role i know there was some talks and this this was in uh, pre-production for a while um how did you first hear about the role uh, when you auditioned did you know it was going to be for mario puzo um kind of what was that audition process like i'd love yeah, to hear. Uh, you know typically you know what i mean you know i mean it comes from my agent and uh, there was very little about the project. Like I, it was, it, the only difference is that it was a little more uh, secretive um, when we were approached j yeah. just to audition. You know, you could tell that it wasn't the same as a regular audition in the way that they were like, N -n your agent can't see the script. We're not going to send you, or can only send it to you. And here's a special email address. And yeah, da 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 da. Yeah. Um, you know, they wouldn't tell me anything about the project. And of course I saw the name Puzo and, you know, I kind of thought I was like, okay, this, this has to do with Mario Puzo. I, I didn't know. Um, and then that was it, you know, and then, then it was the audition process. Um, I ended up getting it and, you know, I don't know, two days later, I was, I was on a plane and life changed, man. Like, like just, you know, amazing, amazing, wonderful, uh, you know, switch of, of life, you know, it just happens like that. Yeah. And that was it. And you, and then you just, you know, you acclimate, you know, you, you, you calibrate to the energy that, that is laid upon you. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, you just kind of zone in and you, yeah. yeah. I know, you know, the, the late great Mario Puzo obviously has since uh, passed. Did you, connect with his family at all um you know what was kind of the the prep work that you had to do once you once you booked it 
No, I mean, that, it was really just, uh, you know, um, just reading and, and, and you know, and, and already knowing what I knew of him and, and what I had read of him and um, watching interviews and reading transcripts and, you know, just kind of, you know, absorbing all of the words because I think that was the roadmap, right? I mean, he was such an artist and and he wanted to be seen as an artist and, and that mattered to him. It did matter to him. Uh, yeah. Art mattered to him. Um, and, you know, I think you read his work and, 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 and through that, you find his spirit, you find the things he like really cared about. And, uh, and then you just kind of throw that on the floor and kind of, you know, let it, let it follow you would hope, hope that it, that, that kind of that his spirit follows you into the role. And that's really what I did. You know, I just hope that it, it, it stuck around. Yeah, no, and, and no. definitely, I mean, everyone's doing a phenomenal job. I mean, it's very rare where you have a show where every character is just spot on. My, my biggest thing I was worried about who was going to play Marlon Brando. I mean, it's such a tough, um, you know, role to play. Yeah. And Weston Chambers yeah. kills it. He is phenomenal. Um, same with uh, Anthony Epolito. I felt like I was watching 70s Al Pacino. Dan Fogler as well, too, as Francis. Um, it was mm -hmm. really iconic to see that dinner scene where we kind of see everybody, you know, the family yeah. come together yeah. with Marlon at the head of the table. Because we've heard about that scene, right, from interviews from Francis. Sure. But that scene, watching it, gave me chills. It's unbelievable. That's beautiful, man. That's fantastic. That's great. Uh, yeah, it's a great scene. My wife loves that scene, too. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, everybody does a, a fantastic job. You know, everybody does. Now this, this might be a dumb question, but was there any added pressure into taking the role? Were you nervous taking the role just because it's part of an iconic brand, even though it's the offer, it's unique, but it's connected to Godfather. But were you having any nervousness as far as the expectations from fans? I don't know. I mean, yeah, you know, like you would normally have, you know what I mean? Like, you know what, it's going to either, some people are going to dig it. Some people aren't going to dig it. Um, but once again, that's something that you just kind of like get, you get over it. It doesn't really weigh that much on you, you know, because you're very in the moment, you know, that's, that's what it is when you're making something, when you're acting, um, yeah. it is really just being absolutely present and in the moment. And so you're not really thinking about it all like layered and stacked up and sort of what's it going to be when it goes out into the world? Like, that's not my business. That's not our business. And so you don't really think about it that way. You don't go, I wonder if, if we, literally, uh, I wonder if people are going to like it. Yeah. It just doesn't, some people I'm sure feel that way, but nah, we never really felt that way. You, we were excited about it. Yeah. The fact that we were making it, you know, we were just bursting at all moments. Um, about it so so you don't really think about the external uh when it comes to to making something like that you just you let it go you know you're just doing the work you're just connected to the work it's really it and it's effortless you're not like fighting to do it you're that's just the way it is when you're uh when you're acting yeah no and you you nail it i mean you're phenomenal in this role and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start uh, telling Paramount, I might have to charge commissions. I probably had 10 subscriptions added on from Paramount ever because the first episode's available. And um, I have folks say, like, guys, you got to watch this show. You got to watch this show. And they get hooked and boom, their subscriptions on at least 10 folks that I know. Um, nice. so the, show, the show's unbelievable. And um, the million dollar question, and I'm sure you've been asked this before, do you have a favorite Godfather film out of the three? Two. Part two, part two, and why? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I I love the Godfather one. You know, I, I yeah. love it. It's a it's a beautiful piece. But you know, I think that it just I don't know. It's like it's sort of like um, you cook that meal that night and you eat it, and then there's a whole bunch of leftovers and you put them in the fridge and the next day you heat it up and you go. Oh my God, it tastes better. It's the same food, but like all the spice and everything kind of just kind of became one. Yeah, yeah. And you go, I think it's better than it was yesterday. You know, it, it's, it's that kind of a feeling. Yeah. Um, I think it's a beautiful journey that that two takes us on, you know, that suddenly we get to see the, you know, this entire spectrum of life yeah. um, 
that we didn't get with the Godfather one, but we didn't expect it. We didn't look for it either, you know? So Puzo and Coppola really surprised us with this really unique way of, of telling this story. Um, so, you know, and it's just so, it's got such a beautiful depth to it. And it, it's just, it's really such a work of art, man. And so is one, but, but I prefer, you know, but two, I, I love, I think two is the best of the yeah. three. Yeah, I've, I've seen it debated, uh, you know, both ways. I mean, there, there's no right answer, obviously. Um, no. First is unbelievable. The second is phenomenal, too, and all the accolades that came with it. I love the yeah. third film as well. Anytime it's on, I always watch it. Um, I know you, can, you probably can't say much, but what can fans expect with the second half of the season uh, remaining? Well, we make the film. We get the film off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it does well uh, you know uh but that's yeah that's i mean that's really all i can say uh you know we 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 just you know just just keep trucking along and uh and we get there as as we all know no spoiler there yeah. um but yeah that's that's pretty much all i'll say and then uh, you're in for the old uh you know the old journey will continue tomorrow absolutely yep. episode six tomorrow can't can't so, wait. can't wait yeah, then, it's a great then, episode oh man no i can't wait and i'm definitely gonna yeah. uh, obviously have a I, every every episode i've had a, a a party at the house where we gather together and watch it it's just like it's it's unbelievable all right. it's event oh, uh, oh that's good I, I, that's great Get, you tell all your your friends and everything that that's a wonder i love that that's beautiful and send them my best absolutely eat a meatball in my honor absolutely we will we will I'll definitely make sure and 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 Patrick also as well too I can't let you sneak out of here without bringing up the Boardwalk Empire now Sopranos and Boardwalk Empire are two of my all-time favorite series and we actually had the privilege of interviewing uh, Chris Caldovino uh, a few times who get the hell out of here really yeah he's been on the show a few times and you play Franco uh on Boardwalk I play his cousin his cousin his cousin and yeah, You're, sure I do. And, and, and we didn't know. It's funny you bring that up. I haven't thought about this in forever. So I was supposed to play uh, his role, which was... Uh, Tanino? Tanino. Tanino? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I was reading for. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and got all the way to call that. It was like me and Chris were like, it was like this. And, and he got it, right? Of course, I didn't know that until we got to set. And then I get Franco and I play his cousin. So he gets this big old arc and his great role, you know, and he was great. Uh, and it turns out that when I get to set, we realize that we played brothers in a reading of a play in Los Angeles, like, eight years before that. And we were like, oh, oh my God. And now I was playing his cousin. And we had forgotten. And we were like, oh my God, at the Strasbourg Theater in LA, holy shit. Like it just, just kind of slipped our mind. Uh, and anyway, so yeah. So so that was great working with him. Yeah, that was that was really a cool, uh, really cool thing to work on. Yeah, um, unbelievable show. Obviously, you know, produced, you know, with, with Martin Scorsese. Mark Wahlberg was yeah. attached as well to Terrence Winter, yeah. legend himself. Um, yeah, your, yeah, your character made the, uh, the unwise uh, decision to make uh, a suggestion <laughs> to Chip Rossetti. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was, it was, you know, we all know what happened to the fate of your character, but what was it like yeah. you know, working on the show? What was it like shooting that scene in the sand, taking the headshots? Uh, it was a trip, man. It was a real trip, you know, they, they make the prosthetic head and... Mm -hmm you know, where I had that sort of pain look on my face whenever the shovel would hit me. Um, it was wild, man, buried on a beach in Staten Island for, you know, until, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning, you know, the sun was coming up uh, with the Veronzano Bridge. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was a wild shoot, you know, just how often are you like buried in the sand, you know, yeah. um, getting hit with a shovel by Bobby Cannavale. So it was, uh, it was wild. And then there's another connection. Jake Cannavale worked is, is in the offer. Uh, and uh, so we got to connect on that. You know what I mean? It's, you know, your father 
we were at a party in LA. And I said, Jake, you know, your father beat the shit out of me with a shovel. Whoa, that's you. You know, he didn't realize it, you know. So it was, it was very, you know, fun, fun little discoveries and those connections that happened. But it was a great show. Unbelievable. And there was some some murmurs about maybe a, a TV movie for Boardwalk Empire. Have you heard anything? Is that sort of died no. out or is it still in the works? Or it'd be great to get. Uh, you know, I've heard nothing about that. I, um, I've heard nothing about that. It's a strange concept yeah. since it was on TV. Um, yeah. So it's a TV movie. Yeah, I think focusing <clears throat> more on the Lucky Luciano, Meyer Lansky uh, era. Um, of course, does he, are they all connected to it? Is that? Yeah, I know. That, that I would, that I trust it. You know what I mean? If that's yeah. what's happening. Yeah, this um, was a little while no, ago. Yeah, we'll see. Well, ho hopefully they, they find a way to bring it back. But I'm also happy with the way it closed out as well, too. Um, yes, me too. And The Irishman. I mean, this was yeah. Academy Award. I think it was close to 10 or 11 uh, nominations in total. A film that was, you know, almost 10 years in the making. Yeah. And um, you're in one of the most iconic scenes. And if I remember correctly, too, and there was some promo uh, for this film, this is one of the first scenes that was shared was that sit down scene where Jimmy Hoffa is ready for Tony for this traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what was it like? shooting that scene working with all these legends and actually even before that apologies love to hear how you first heard about the role and landed the role oh i mean I, you know I, I got i i i got an audition i knew it was first scorsese movie and that was yeah. you know i was like oh my god this is unbelievable uh and uh and i went and i read you know i did sort of a general monologue that scorsese likes to have a lot of actors read the same monologue and I think he doesn't know where to put them. So if he likes them, he'll be like, okay, I got it. And now I got to figure out where to put them. I think I was in that sort of mix, you know? Um, I remember I thought I blew it. I left and, and, uh, and I was sitting on the curb outside of uh, Alan Lewis's office who, who, and down in Tribeca, who, who, who is, you know, legend, Alan. She's amazing human just a great person but but love love it anyway so i remember sitting there going like i had this one shot for a scorsese film and i and and, and and i blew it i blew it and it, and that's it and i have to and it was very you know i was you know you know the sort of self-deprecating actor um and then i got it and and that was i was it was incredible i mean um you know once again you know you just you switch into gear no matter how surreal the circumstances are uh walking on that set especially the day that i shot with with de niro and pacino i i, I like put it this way like the fact that i'm even saying that to you right now is always like you know any actor would be like if you know the, here's my bucket list i want to work with pacino i want to work with de niro i want to work with scorsese like these are the the bucket list of an actor uh it it, it they lay it on me in one day you know, I got it all in one day. Wow. And it was, it, it was extraordinary. I mean, I would leave. We would, if the shot was going to, you know, turn around, they were going to change the setup. I'd go outside and get on the phone, weeping to my mother, you know, and saying like, you know, can you believe where I am? This is unbelievable. And, you know, she helped me out in my career and, you know, she didn't have any money. She would pay my rent. And when I was broke after working in restaurants in New York and so she's the one I call, you know, this is the one I'm going to share this with. It was incredible, man. And we were all, we were all total equals. You know, they treated me like there was, it wasn't like Pacino and De Niro and Scorsese and oh my God, it, it was, it was, we're all artists. We're all working on a piece. And there was no egos. They were just, it was us hanging out. And it was, it was just, you know, it, I can tell you that probably 40 to 50 times the thought went through my head while I was sitting there, which was, uh, what, what the fuck is going on right now? Can I, like, I can't believe, this is you know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, De Niro, you know, would be working in his lines over here, like before we shot, you know, De Niro, like, would be sitting over here and, and Pacino would be sitting over here. Now we all met, but now we're all, we have our script and we're just kind of working. So they're both sitting over here. And I would have my script like this, and I would literally do this. Wow. Just in awe. 
De Niro, Pacino, De Niro, Pacino. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, then of course, Scorsese. So uh, it was a, it was an incredible, incredible experience beyond, beyond words, really. Yeah, and, so. and again, I don't, I don't know if it's because it was one of the first scenes that was shared, but your line is one of the lines that I just can't stop repeating. There's traffic. <laughs> yeah. It's it, amongst all, I, I love, I, just such a, um, a genuine line, right? Because that was the reason why you guys yeah. were late. And um, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think your character, I don't think you had any scenes with, uh, with Joe Pesci, but did you get a chance to meet him on set? No, 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 okay. no. No, I didn't have any scenes with him, and I and I, you know, and I didn't, I didn't get to meet him on set at all. No, no. But I really wasn't looking. You know, that would have been wonderful. But I mean, I was at, you know, I was in Legend Overload that day, man. Yeah. Um. There. You know, and then I got to not work with De Niro, uh, but but he produced another project that I was a part of. <clears throat> so um, after we shot, you know, I got to see him again, of course, in the uh, work in you know in the work capacity uh on uh, when they see us um which is he was one of the producers of when they see us uh Ava DuVernay's um unbelievable show but uh but yeah so that's kind of you know two two times yeah. to work again, with the great no it's yeah. un unbelievable and it's again it's it's one of my favorite films and in, in preparation um because again this this was in production for almost it was like nine or ten years um, I yeah. got a full book about, you know, five years before, and then I picked up the newer copy that had the Netflix um, cover on it too. Um, so I did yeah. some research yeah. before and so thankful that we've had a chance to, to meet with a lot of the cast of the Irishman. Um, I cool. guess the, the next million dollar question is, do you think Jimmy Hoffa was killed by Frank Sheeran? Probably. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I think that we tend to complicate that whole entire world. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's really not, you know, I think there was a lot less that probably went on. It's like when somebody has to go, somebody goes, you know what I mean? There's not a lot of bullshit. You know, these guys just kind of did it. And, and I think it was probably, the whole thing was probably a lot less complex than we've all made it mm -hmm. to be. But there's this obsession with Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, we want to believe that he's still out there and we can't find him, you know? Um, you know, but I, I, I think in some capacity it's probably less complex. He's the same demise that so many others have had yeah. uh, in that business. You know what I mean? Like I, that's just the biz. Yeah. You know? And you mentioned, I mean, you hit the hat trick with, uh, Martin Scorsese, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and you've worked with a phenomenal, um, set of actors and actresses during your time. Is there someone that you're still hoping to, to work with? that you haven't quite worked with yet? Is there someone still on your list? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people that I would yeah. love to work with, but anytime, you know, whenever I'm asked this question, it always, you know, I, I want to work with Wes Anderson. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to be in front of, you know, I want to be in his, one of his stories. I want to be a part of his world. Uh, I think he paints beautiful images and, uh, and they take my breath away. Yeah. Um, and I love them very much and they make me, you know, they inspire me. I mean, they just, every time I watch one of his films, I just feel like I'm just, you know, kind of being, you know, slid through a, an art gallery and, and, you know, handed, you know, Italian sodas and, you know, delicious food, you know, whenever I turn a corner and then I'm looking at a beautiful painting and, it's all good things, man, that, that, that he brings to me. And that's, so anyway, whatever, not to, to go off on a tangent, but I want to work with Wes Anderson. No, that'd be, that'd be, a, that's another one that we're going to work on. We're going to get you in Rocky and we're also going to get you with, with Wes Anderson as well too. Yeah. Like scoop, scoop me over to the West Anderson. I'd rather do the Wes Anderson thing. <laughs> For sure. than, than... <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't turn it down, but I'm saying I'd prefer to work with Wes. Absolutely work with Wes Anderson for sure. You know, you could be, you could, you know, Paulie might have had a son that we didn't know about, right? That's true. Paulie, it's Paulie true. might have had a son that we don't hey, know. Hey, listen, I, uh, I'd be all over that, man. I love Burt Young, and 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 I've, I've, there's been comparisons that people have made, uh, and uh, you know, to him. Yeah. by way of me and i and i'm always like so honored i like i love that like i love Burr, you know I think yeah. he's a legend he just brilliant. had a birthday not too long ago yeah what is he like 86 now or something like that 
I believe so. I, I think so. Yeah, I think he's in the early 80s. 80s yeah, 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 yeah. I think I saw that. I saw, I saw something about them. Yeah. And I saw him once on the street in New York in front of the actor's studio. Oh, was this recently or a while ago? No, no, my God. This is probably in the late 90s. Yeah. Okay. And I was walking, walking down the street. And, uh, or maybe I was walking out of the actor's studio, uh, you know, that I auditioned for a handful of times and they never, they never cared to uh, accept me there. But uh, I was walking out or past it, but I was like, oh my God, there's Bert Young and he was standing outside having a smoke and drinking a coffee or something. And, you know, I wasn't one to go up and kind of, you know, fan out on, on people that I really admire. Um, but I just said, I said, hey man, I said, this is great to meet you. Was, oh, thanks man, thanks buddy. But I was like, there you go, Bert Young, you know, on, on, you know, in, in Midtown. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, and also too, so as, I know you're, you're quite busy, but I always love asking our guests when you guys are not working, what are the shows that you guys are binge watching? What do you binge watch whenever you're uh, uh, I'll tell you right now what I just binge, binged watched. I'm not maybe a big Maybe the offer. Well, of course the offer, <laughs> you know that. Uh, uh, but, uh, I'm not a big TV guy. I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, so, uh, but I, I can tell you that two nights ago, I finished Ozark. Oh yeah. Um, fantastic. You know, Rick, Rick Perez, one of our, um, guests we've had here to use officer Silva. Um, oh, get out of here. Oh no yeah. shit. Yeah. Rick Perez, Rick Perez. Yeah. We just, uh, we've interviewed him a few times. He's a long time friend. Awesome guy from Cobra Kai and Ozark and, Bunch of yeah, 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 yeah. That's so cool, man. That's great. There too. Yeah, that's Good actually job. cool. That's awesome. I love it. Um, Ozark and I just finished The Great. Oh yeah. Um, which is fantastic. It's on Hulu, and and I'll, I'll always promote The Great. Um, and that's pretty much where I'm. Like, I have a lot of shows that I've, you know, loved and watched, you know, throughout my life that I will go back to Seinfeld and. Yeah. Um, awesome. Taxi and, you know, all in the family. Nice. Nice. Curb your enthusiasm, Mr. Show. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Yeah. But, but those perfect. are the two that I just finished. Yeah. 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 The Great and uh, and Ozark. Yeah. Awesome. And, and Patrick, we know we're going to see um, episode six coming out tomorrow, but are you able to share just some of your upcoming projects or where else can we see you uh, next? What can I share? Um, I can't really say anything. I got a couple of things cooking, um, but when I can, I will scream them to you. Sure. Um, but there's some cool things cooking, man. There's some stuff happening. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Perfect. Yeah, I Maybe always use that. A quick interview and I can make an announcement on your show or something. Perfect. I was going to say, I always like to use that as an excuse for round two. So that's yeah, cool. there you go. That's See, cool. I'm one step ahead of you, man. That's we have cool. a round two in the books. As soon as I can reveal anything I'm working on, it's going to come to you, brother. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and Patrick, I want to be respectful of your time. Thank you so Thanks, much buddy. for making the time to, to meet with us. And again, being able to walk through these classic shows, movies, the offer that's currently going on right now as well, too. Um, can't wait to share with the fans. Can't wait to see episode six. It's a little surreal that I'm watching, you know, one of my favorite shows on TV right now. And I'm meeting one of the hit stars on there and get to kind of learn how it's all happening and, and how it all worked for you. All Can right. You that's cool, you? man. Yeah, bro. I, I, I hear you. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, you'll see it. You'll certainly see me probably in a slightly different light. Um, but uh, but I'm, I'm glad that you had this opportunity and I'm glad I had the opportunity and I appreciate you asking me on the show. You know, we do we, where I get we're doing each other a favor. So let's just keep it, let's make sure we know that. Thank you so much. And we'll, we'll definitely keep in touch and we'll yeah. get this going again for round two. Thank you, Patrick. You, 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 you got it, dude. Have a good one, man. All the best. Give your friends my best. And Absolutely. join episode six. We will. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care, bro. See ya. Bye.